Our objective in this lesson is to solve radical equations. Let us define radical equation. It is an equation in which one or both sides of the equation contains a variable in the radicand. Since this is equation, of course, there must be equal sign. Next to consider is the radicand. It should contain a variable. In here, there is a variable inside the radical symbol and there is also a variable outside. And also, it could be one like this or both sides like this have radicals in the equation. Let us solve a radical equation. A square root of k plus 2 is equal to 5. First step, isolate terms with radical sign. So we are going to move 2 to the other side. Next, we simplify. 5 minus 2 is equal to 3. Third step, we square both sides. Y is square because this is a square root. Next step, we solve for the value of the unknown. So the index here 2 will cancel out together with this exponent 2. So this will just be k and 3 squared is equal to 9. Last step, we check if the solution satisfies the equation. All we have to do is to substitute our value of the unknown to the original equation. So this will be a square root of 9 plus 2 is equal to 5. Are they equal? A square root of 9 is equal to 3. Are they equal? And 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. And 5 is equal to 5. Therefore, our answer k is equal to 9 is the solution of this equation. Let's have another one. Again, first step, isolate terms with radical sign. So let us move 5 to the other side. It will become negative. Then we simplify 7 minus 5 is equal to 2. This time, we cube both sides because the index is 3. And then we solve for the value of the unknown. So the index 3 and the exponent 3 will cancel out. So this will just be x. And 2 cubed is equal to 8. Then let us check. So let us substitute 8 in our original equation. Are they equal? So cube root of 8 is equal to 2. Are they equal? 5 plus 2 is 7. So they are equal. Therefore, our answer x equals 8 is the solution of this equation. Third example, since the radical is already isolated and the equation is in simplest form, let us now square both sides. So in here, the index 2 and the exponent 2 will cancel out, so we will be having 5x. In here, negative 5 squared is 25. To solve for x, let us divide both sides by 5. 5 and 5 will cancel out, and 25 divided by 5 is equal to 5. Now let us check. Let us substitute 5 in our original equation. Are they equal? 5 times 5 is 25. Are they equal? The square root of 25 is positive and negative 5. But remember, we consider the principal root. So the square root of 25 is equal to 5. And 5 is not equal to negative 5. Therefore, our solution x equals 5 is an extraneous solution. Extraneous solution is a solution that does not satisfy the given equation, and we do not consider it. That is why it is important to check your answer to determine the possibility of having extraneous solution. Next one, since the indices of the radicals are the same, let us cube both sides. So cube root and exponent 3 will cancel out, same thing with this side. Then let us combine like terms, let us move C here. Then copy 8. Let us move 1 here. 2c minus c is equal to c. Then 8 minus 1 is equal to 7. Now let us check. Let us substitute 7 in our original equation. Are they equal? 2 times 7 is 14. 14 plus 1 is 15. So cube root of 15. 7 plus 8 is also 15. So cube root of 15. So they are equal. Therefore, our answer C equals 7 is the solution of this equation. Another one, since the index is 2, to eliminate that, let us square both sides. So this is a square of a binomial. So let us square the first term, that's B squared. Let's bring down 2, multiply with B, that's 2B. Then multiply with negative 2, negative 4B. 
Then let us square negative 2. Negative 2 is squared is positive 4. In here, the index and the exponent 2 will just cancel out, so 2b minus 4. Since this is quadratic, there is a possibility that this is a quadratic trinomial that is factorable. So I'll transfer all terms on one side. I'll copy b squared minus 4b. I'll transfer 2b. It will become negative. Copy positive 4. Move negative 4. It will become positive. Nothing is left on this side, so equal to 0. And then negative 4b minus 2b is negative 6b. So b squared minus 6b. 4 plus 4 is equal to 8. Copy equals 0. So this is a quadratic trinomial, and yes, it is factorable. The factors are b minus 4 and b minus 2. Quick check. Negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8. Negative 4 minus 2 is negative 6. So the factors are correct. b minus 4 equals 0. b is equal to 4. b minus 2 equals 0. b is equal to 2. Let us check. Let us start with b is equal to 4. Let us substitute 4 in our original equation. Are they equal? 4 minus 2 is 2. In here, 2 times 4 is 8, and 8 minus 4 is 4. So 2 equals a square root of 4. Are they equal? A square root of 4 is 2, so it will be 2 equals 2. And yes, they are equal. Next, if b is equal to 2, let us substitute 2 in our original equation. Are they equal? 2 minus 2 is 0. On this side, 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 minus 4 is 0. So 0 equals square root of 0. Are they equal? Square root of 0 is 0. So they are equal. Therefore, our solution b equals 4 and b equals 2 are correct. Let us have one more. The indices of our radicals are the same and it is 2, so let us square both sides. So the index here and exponent will just cancel out. This one is a square of a binomial. So let us square the first term. 2 is squared is 4. Then let's bring down 2 times 2 is 4 times negative is square root of q minus 1 is negative 4 is square root of q minus 1. Negative is squared is positive. For square root of q minus 1 squared, the index and the exponent will just cancel out. So plus q minus 1. Since I still have a radical here, I need to isolate this. So I'll transfer 4, q, and negative 1 on the other side. I'll copy 3q minus 5. I'll transfer 4. It will become negative. I'll transfer q. It will become negative. Negative 1 transferred here, it will become positive. So what is left on this side is just negative 4 is square root of q minus 1. 3q minus q is 2q. Negative 5 minus 4 is negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8. And then I'll copy negative 4 is square root of q minus 1. I'll just switch their places so that 4 will become positive. So 2q transferred here will become negative. Negative 8 transferred here will become positive. To eliminate the index here, I still have to square both sides. So 4 is squared will be 16. And then square root of q minus 1 squared, the index and the exponent will just cancel out. So that would be 16 times q minus 1. On this side is again a square of a binomial. So 8 is squared is 64. And then let's bring down 2 times 8 is 16 times negative 2q is negative 32q. Negative is squared is positive. 2q is squared is 4q squared. So plus 4q squared. 16 times q is 16q. 16 times negative 1 is negative 16. And then I'll copy the rest. Just like earlier, since I have a quadratic here, I'll transfer everything on one side. Because this is probably a quadratic trinomial that is factorable. So since 4 here is positive, I'll transfer this into this side. So I'll start with positive 4q squared, followed by negative 32q, and then negative 16q, 
and then plus 64, and then plus 16, since nothing is left here, equals 0. Copy 4Q squared, negative 32Q minus 16Q is negative 48Q. 64 plus 16 is 80. Copy equals 0. 4, 48, and 80 are all divisible by 4. So I'll divide everything by 4. So 4Q four squared divided by 4 is Q squared. Negative 48Q divided by 4 is negative 12Q. 80 divided by 4 is positive 20. Copy equals 0. So this is a quadratic trinomial that is factorable. And the factors are Q minus 2 and Q minus 10. Quick check, negative 2 times negative 10 is positive 20. Negative 2 minus 10 is negative 12. So our factors are correct. Q minus 2 equals 0. Q is equal to 2. Q minus 10 equals 0. Q is equal to 10. I'll let you do the checking on this problem. So once again, here is the summary of solving radical equation. Now it is time to check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. Let us answer. I hope you are up for a little challenge. So first, let us e square both sides. So this is a square of a binomial. So let us e square the first term. The index 2 and the exponent will cancel out. Then let's copy the sign of the middle term. Let's bring down 2 here and multiply with our first and second term. And then let us e square the second term. So the index and the exponent will cancel out again. And on this side, the index and the exponent will cancel out too. Since I still have radicals here, I need to isolate them. And then I'll transfer the rest on the other side. So first, let me copy equals 9c minus 2. 4c on the other side, negative 4c. Negative 3 on the other side, positive 3. C on the other side, minus C. 1 on the other side, negative 1. I'll copy this. 9C minus 4C is 5C. Minus C is 4C. Negative 2 plus 3 is positive 1. Positive 1 minus 1 is 0. So there is nothing to add here. And then I'll divide both sides by 2. 2 and 2 will cancel out. Then 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2. So on this side, I'll be having 2C. Since I still have radicals, I'll square again both sides. So by squaring both sides, the indices here will be eliminated. And 2C squared is 4C squared. 4C times C is 4C squared. 4C times 1 is 4C. Negative 3 times C is negative 3C. Negative 3 plus 1 is negative 3. Copy 4C squared. 4C squared positive, 4C squared positive, each on the other side will just cancel out. 4C minus 3C is C. So I have C minus 3 equals 0 since nothing is left here. Moving this to the other side, C is equal to 3. Let's do a quick checking. Let us substitute 3 on our original equation. So if this is 3, 4 times 3 is 12, and 12 minus 3 is 9, is square root of 9 is 3. Here, 3 plus 1 is 4, and square root of 4 is 2. In here, 9 times 3 is 27, 27 minus 2 is 25, square root of 25 is 5. 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. Therefore, our answer C is equal to 3 is the solution of this equation. Gets?